In addition to obtaining generic hardware information, we'd like to take a few moments and tell you a little bit about some specific devices that are commonly requiring configuration in a Linux environment. The first of which is our network card configuration. The network cards are obviously going to be very important because they allow us to access the network and share information and resources with other computers. Now we will be using the if config command in a network environment. And this will allow us, just by using the IF config, to actually look at the configuration of the interface. So if we move over to our Linux operating system and type in IF config, you can see in this example I've actually configured 1010.128.107 as my IP address. So I'm configured as the ETH0 network card. And that's the actual name that we're going to use to reference that. For example, if I want to gather only information about that particular network card, I can type that in, and as you see, I'm only going to get information about it. Now, the loopback address is used to assist in troubleshooting and reference the computer itself. If I want to test connectivity to myself, which obviously I'm going to have if I'm set up correctly, I can type in the IP address of the local loopback and I'm always going to get a reply. Now if I want to test connectivity on the network I can actually ping for example another computer on my network. And that's going to let me know that I have network connectivity. In addition, just being able to tell that you have an IP address lets you know that there is at least some limited form of communication happening on the network. If we want to make configuration changes to our network interfaces, we can look at our configuration options. Let's go ahead and port that into a text file so we can take a look at it. So if we want to look at some specific configuration options available to us, we can simply look into the man file of ifconfig, and we specify the interface, any options that are available, and if we like, any specific addresses that we want to use. So we can continue down and look at typing ifconfig interface name and up, will cause it to go up or allow it to be activated. So if we want to test that out, we can type in ifconfig and put that Ethernet adapter down. So now if we look at our configuration, you can see here that all I'm going to see is my loopback adapter. If I want to bring that back up, I can simply type up. So I have config in addition to actually displaying information also allows us to configure our individual Ethernet adapters. Now on the flip side, if we're using wireless network interface cards, we can use the IW config, and in some situations we can even use the IF config to work with those wireless network adapters. Now, in addition to Ethernet adapters, we're also going to have modems in some environments. So modems are going to register as a serial device, and assuming it's available, we'll probably register under dev TTY0. Now, it's also going to go ahead and map itself over to dev modem to give it a more user-friendly access. Now, we can configure our modem settings using the set serial command, or we can actually use the RC serial script. Now generally there's not a lot of configuration options here. There might be scenarios when you're actually using modem emulation or some oddball hardware modems where you'll have to actually go in and configure the serial bit rate and things of that nature. But as a general rule, we don't have to do a lot of configuration for our modems. Now when modems, which is a term used to reference usually ISA or PCI modems, that rely on the Windows operating system to provide a lot of functionality don't work in a Linux environment simply because the drivers and the resources as far as the software is concerned is just not available for the Linux operating system. So be aware that you might run into 